Hi, this is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a raindrop or a, it's also called a teardrop shape in Photoshop. If you would like the design files for this tutorial, uh, be sure to uh, check out my Patreon page where I upload all of the uh, design files for um, all of my tutorials here on YouTube. If you'd like to uh, support this channel, go ahead and check that out and I will leave a link to uh, my Patreon page in the description below. First off, let's go ahead and create a new file. Clicking on a new file here, I'm gonna use the dimensions of 1200 pixels by 1200 pixels. Artboards, um, not selected here. Resolution is 300 pixels per inch. Color mode, RGB color, and then background content set to transparent. And then just click on create. From here, I'm just gonna click on D to get my default colors here. And then I'm going to use a grid. So we're gonna go to view, new guide layout, and then I'm gonna go six columns and six rows here, and then just click on okay. Next, I'm gonna use the pen tool which is P on the keyboard, setting my fill to black here, and then I have shape selected here. I'm just gonna go ahead and click on a point. As I click, I am just going to uh, drag out the handles here, and then selecting my next point here, I'm going to uh, drag out the handles again, and then we are gonna continue just around dragging out the handles until we get our uh, basic shape here. Clicking on this point as well, dragging out the handles, and then we will go ahead and finish off that shape here. Next, I'm going to select the direct selection tool here, which is A on the keyboard. And then just clicking on this top point here, I you will see these handles uh, point up here. If I were to move this handle right now, it would cause uh, both of them to move. So just undoing that there. To uh, break the handles, I'm gonna hit Option Click or Alt Click for PC. And then I'm just going to uh, drag it down here and then letting go there. And then because the handles are already broken without clicking any extra keys, I'm just going to bring this side down as well. So with these handles, you could always play with the angle here. Uh, for this case, I like it a little bit to have that uh, extreme curve here. So now we have the basis of our shape. And then you could always, uh, with your still the direct selection tool here, I'm going to uh, bring these down a little bit just to kind of stretch out the shape a little bit more to get my uh, raindrop shape. Let's go ahead and turn off these guides. So we'll go to view clear canvas guides and then I'm gonna access the move tool V on the keyboard here. And then I'm going to uh, narrow my thing just a little bit here. And now I have my basic raindrop shape. With this shape, I'm gonna go ahead and create a basic repeating pattern here. Selecting my shape here, I'm gonna go ahead and convert it to a smart object to start with. So I'm gonna go right click, convert to smart object. And then for uh, demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna use one of my uh, Photoshop actions here. I'm gonna to come to uh, my dot set here and I'm just gonna create a basic repeating dot pattern, selecting that action and then just hitting play. And then automatically it adds the shape to the four corners. And then with this action, it also automatically defines the pattern for me. Uh, so it makes it quick that way. I'm gonna go ahead and test this pattern now. So let's open up a new document, Command or Control N, and then I'm gonna select uh, digital scrapbook paper. So 3,600 pixels by 3,600 pixels, and then uh, resolution 300 pixels per inch, and then we'll just click on Create. Let's go ahead and add a pattern adjustment layer here. Just selecting OK, and then from my Patterns panel here, if you do not see this, you can go to Windows and select Patterns. I'm gonna select my newly created pattern here. And then let's go ahead and give it some color. So I'm gonna give a solid color adjustment layer here. Let's pick a, um, a blue color. We'll go OK, and then we'll do a clipping mask. So to create a clipping mask, you'll go right click, create clipping mask, or you can hover between the layers and go 
option click or alt click for PC to create your clipping mask. And then let's just go ahead and add one more solid color adjustment layer. We'll just use white FFF and then we'll position this at the back for our uh, digital paper here. Uh, with this pattern fill layer, you can always double click and you can change the scale here. So let's try 50% scale. With this dialog box open, you always have the option to uh, reposition your pattern around. If you want to get back to the original, you can click on Snap to Origin. You do have the option to adjust the angle, but I find that it takes a lot of processing power, so I do not uh, use that feature here. So we'll go ahead and click on OK. And with these color fill layers, you can easily change uh, the color of your pattern, maybe give it a different color for the background. Uh, let's go ahead and jump back over into our original document here. Uh, let's click on our shape layer into our smart object. I have uh, my shape here, and then I am going to uh, select the shape tool here. I'm going to bring my fill to no fill. Let's go ahead and give it a stroke. We'll select black. Under the stroke settings here, I'm going to hit the drop down menu and then with the align, I'm going to align it to the inside. That way it stays within the bounds of my canvas here. Other options include on the outside, which will bring it outside of the canvas. So I like to use in certain cases, the uh, inside of the stroke here. And then maybe we'll bring up the size here. Let's try 40 pixels, making it a little bit uh, bolder there. And then let's go ahead and save this Commander Control S, and then we'll close out Commander Control W. And we have our uh, new pattern using the stroke. So let's go ahead and define this pattern. Edit, define pattern, clicking on OK. And then we'll jump back over here into our other document. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and access the artboard tool. I'm gonna go Shift B. You'll notice that it changes the artboard tool here. With this artboard selected, I'm going to go Option click for Mac or Alt click for PC. And then I'm just gonna drag this artboard to the side. That way we have a duplicate copy of our previous artboard. And then I'm going to uh, select this new layer here. We'll jump back into our patterns menu and click on our new pattern here. And so now, and now we have a variation of our raindrop teardrop pattern here. And then we can have fun and just maybe switch the colors around here. And we have a um, different variation here. So if I want to save this as digital scrapbook paper, uh, before saving it, I do recommend that you name your layer. So let's go ahead and bring this one to the top. We'll go uh, one pattern. Uh, typically, I'll use uh, my brand name. So it would be um, one and then Lemon Paper Lab. Uh, but for this example, we'll just use pattern. And then we'll go to File, Export, Export As. Under suffix here, we are going to just add a dash and then just add in raindrop. And then this will automatically be added to the back of our file names here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and select both here. Under file settings in format, I'm going to select JPEG. And then you have the option to change the quality because this is digital scrapbook paper, I'm gonna do high quality here. When you do bring up the quality, it does increase the file size just to uh, be aware there. And then just scrolling down under color space, I like to make sure embed color profile is selected. And then we'll just click on export to uh, save your digital scrapbook paper. Thank you for watching this video on how to create a teardrop or a raindrop shape in Photoshop using the pen tool. Again, if you want access to all the design files for my tutorials, then you can join me over on Patreon. I will leave a link to it in the description below. Thank you for the support. It helps me to keep making these tutorials. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. Be sure to check out my other tutorials on how to create patterns in Photoshop. In the description below, I will leave a link to my Etsy shop where you can purchase the Photoshop action that I used today to easily create the repeating pattern. 
Thank you for watching this video. This is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. See you next time.